Hey everybody, it's Josh Alexander from Orange County Housing Market News. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. If this is the first time you're tuning into this show, this show is all about Orange County real estate. So I go over local trends in the market, I interview other experts in the field, and then I also go over some tricks, tips, and advice for both buyers and sellers. So that way, if you're thinking of getting into the market, it's a great place to start. On today's episode, we're gonna be going over the June forecast for the housing market. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so really quick before we get started, if you are finding this content useful, would you please hit that subscribe as well as like button below? And if you're watching this on YouTube, also hit that bell button, that way you're notified every time a new episode comes out. If you're listening to this through podcast form, if you have a free minute, I would love to hear how I'm doing. So if you can please go and rate me, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the housing forecast for June. So let's talk about first what's been going on over the last couple weeks, and then I'll talk about what to expect over the next couple weeks as we head into July. So over the last couple weeks, we haven't really seen much change in the housing market, unfortunately, for buyers right now. So if you were trying to purchase a home or sell your home four weeks ago compared to today, you really don't see a difference. So yes, supply has increased slightly by a few homes over the last couple weeks, Demand has dropped slightly by about 1% over the last couple of weeks, but that doesn't really translate to any noticeable difference in the housing market. We're still in one of the hottest sellers markets we've ever seen. In fact, the hottest sellers market I've seen in my lifetime right now, which means there's going to be multiple offers on most homes. A lot of homes are going above asking price. Appreciation is happening quickly in the market right now and will continue that way through the rest of summer. So let's look at what that means over the next couple weeks for you as a buyer and a seller. So right now we are expecting, as traditionally you see during this time for the housing market, where the summer market really hits is kids get out of school. So if you have kids at home right now, they're either out of school or they're about to be out of school. So for the housing market, that typically means you're going to start seeing more inventory hit the market as kids get out of school. There's less distractions for families and families want to get their house on the market, get it sold, and then be able to move into a new house before the fall semester starts again. So typically you're going to start seeing inventory continue to rise every week, week after week as we go through summer. And at the same time, summer is setting in. So you have a lot of buyer distractions going on right now. So people are going to the beach, they're having family and friends over for barbecues, they're going on vacation right now. Just means there's gonna be a little bit less buyer interest in the market as we go through these summer months. So you can expect to see demand continue to slowly decrease as we go farther and farther into summer. And a great indication of what future demand is going to look like are gonna be those mortgage applications. So buyers that are applying to get a mortgage to be able to go out and look to purchase a home. Right now, over the last couple of weeks, we've been seeing those applications steadily decline, which again, is just an early indication that you should start seeing demand go down slightly as we go farther through June into July. And that's completely typical for this time of year. We see that almost every single year in the housing market. So that's not anything unexpected. So when is this crazy hot seller's market and crazy appreciation that we've been seeing happen month after month going to finally start cooling down? Well, I wanna go over two scenarios with you that will kinda of go over what is most likely to happen over the next couple months, as well as something that I am concerned about that could possibly happen, but again, is a lot less likely. So let's go over the most likely scenario first, and that's going to be using the current data we have, as well as the historical norms of the housing market, so we kinda of know what to expect going through the rest of the year. So like I was saying before, Inventory should continue to rise throughout the rest of the summer and going into fall as well as the winter. And we should continue to see demand decrease as we go out through the rest of the year. When you take that on top of higher interest rates that are expected by the end of the year, we should see that naturally start cooling down the housing market to get to a more sustainable appreciation rate where we're not going to be overheated anymore. So again, that is what I believe is going to happen over the rest of this year, but I do wanna voice a little bit of concern that I do have 
if we continue to have this crazy appreciation happen month after month after month, and we don't have that slowdown that we're expecting. So right now, the economy is continuing to improve. The job numbers just came out. We're adding a lot of jobs. Unemployment's going down. So when the economy approves, typically you want to see those interest rates start to climb back up again. I know as a buyer, you probably don't want to hear that. But as someone that works in the industry, we need that to happen to really start cooling down the market to get us to a more healthy housing market that's sustainable long term. So if we do not see those interest rates climb because they have been pretty much sitting at 3% over the last month and a half now, if we don't start seeing those climb by the end of summer, then I'm starting to get a little concerned because every month that goes by that we have this appreciation, this rapid appreciation happen, you're getting less and less affordability for those people that are trying to purchase homes. And the problem with that is that the less affordable homes get, the more sensitive buyers are gonna become when interest rates start going up. So before COVID happened, we didn't really see interest rates really impact the market until they got above the 4% range. However, because appreciation has been happening so rapidly and because affordability has been going down so rapidly, I expect that buyers are gonna be a lot more sensitive to any movement in interest rates. So instead of having impacts on the housing market once they go above 4%, I could see interest rates really starting to decrease demand significantly once we get to 3.75 or above. So that just means that we really have to pay attention to the interest rates. If they go up too fast, then you can see a more dramatic cooling down of the housing market. Again, I'm not calling for any kind of depreciation happening in the housing market, but it could take us out of a hot seller's market and get us to a more normal balanced market by the end of the year if we don't see interest rates start rising soon to help cool down the appreciation and if we don't see that traditional trend in the market where inventory goes up and demand starts going down. If those two things don't work out like they should, then we could have some issues going into 2022 where we could flatline on appreciation because demand drops a lot faster than it should because of those artificially low interest rates that were kept too long. So in the last housing market crash, there was a lot of talk about how the government didn't do enough to be able to help these homeowners. In this housing market, there's starting to be more talk about that the government might be doing too much and keeping those interest rates way too low and encouraging this fast appreciation to continue to happen for the rest of the year. So again, this is not a very likely scenario, but it's something that I am keeping on my radar and I'll continue to update you over the summer as we get through the rest of the year to see what these interest rates do. If you start seeing those interest rates climb, that's actually a great sign for the housing markets. If you see them stay right where they are right now and not budge for the next six months, then you could start seeing that appreciation rate that's been happening is just no longer sustainable and it could lead to issues down the line. Okay, so let's take a step back from those long-term projections and really talk about what the current market means for both buyers and sellers and how to navigate that. So let's start with buyers first. So buyers, like I said at the beginning of this video, this summer we're going to see a hot seller's market throughout the rest of the summer, which means every week that goes by, you're going to have appreciation happening. Every week that goes by, the chances of interest rates going up is going to increase. So the longer you wait, the more likely you'll be paying a premium for a house by the end of summer compared to right now. So if you've been in the market looking around, make sure you're not throwing in the towel right now because now is still a good time to purchase a home and just make sure that you're focusing on those monthly payments, getting into a home that you can afford long-term and that way you have a predictable payment every single month and you don't have to worry about landlords increasing your rent and you have that stability going forward. Now, one thing that I do wanna talk about, I brought it up in my last video about the five biggest mistakes that buyers are making right now, is that it is taking significantly longer for buyers to get into escrow and have escrow closed. So if you have a timeline that you're looking at where you need to be in a house buy, you need to make sure that you take that timeline and start looking at least three months before you have to be into a new property. In a typical market, you can maybe start looking six weeks, eight weeks before. Right now, you need at least three months because the amount of offers that you most likely will need to place before getting into escrow and then finally having escrow closed will probably take you longer than you're expecting. So make sure you're giving yourself plenty of time to get into a house right now so you're not crunching at the last minute and compromising just to get into a place 
before you have to leave your last place and then ending up with the home that you don't want because you bought in the wrong location or you compromised on your must-haves just to be able to get into a home. That's the number one reason for buyers having regret after they purchased a home right now is because they compromised on the location or those must-haves just to get into a home and then realizing that the home was too small for them, it didn't have the right location, and then regretting it afterwards. So you wanna make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to find that perfect home for you, to be able to get into escrow, and that way you're happy with your choice for years to come and you can make that house your home. So sellers, if you don't already have your house on the market, you wanna get your house on the market as soon as you can. So the best time to place your house on the market was probably a month ago if you wanted to take advantage of the most amount of buyers in the market. From this point on through the rest of the year, expect demand to slowly start dropping and supply to slowly start increasing, which means you're going to have more competition and less buyers, which ultimately is going to lead to less multiple offer situations and homes not going as high above asking price as they once did because you just don't have as much demand. So especially if you're in the luxury market, which in Orange County is $1.5 million and above, you need to get your home on the market as soon as you can. In the luxury market, demand has dropped 5% versus the average of 1% for all of Orange County. So it looks like demand for the luxury homes is dropping a little bit faster now. And again, expect that to continue to happen for the rest of the summer as we go throughout the rest of the year. So get your home on the market if you can, especially if you've been thinking of purchasing a new home with the proceeds of the sale of your current home, because right now buyers are willing to wait two or three months, even after they purchase your home to move in, to give you enough time to find a place of your own. That is not always going to be the case. So you wanna make sure that you're trying to get into the market right now when that demand is as high as it can get, so that way you can negotiate the most favorable terms for yourself if you're trying to get into a new property after you sell the current place that you're in. So to sum it up, interest rates really haven't changed much over the last couple weeks. Demand is starting to go down slightly, supply is slightly starting to increase, and expect that trend to continue, as well as interest rates starting to go up as we get farther and farther into summer. So I hope you found this information useful. Until next time, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you later. Bye. If you found this podcast useful, please hit subscribe and leave a review below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any family or friends that want some more information about buying or selling a home or just want to stay updated on the Orange County housing market, please share it with them. It'd mean the world to me. Thanks.